What's up guys? Vaughn here today. Um, in today we're gonna review this clone consoles. Um, this is the retro. Uh, I did an unboxing of, of this console last week. So if you haven't seen that video, feel free to go to the link below and you can check that out. Um, this plays both NES and Super NES games. So yeah, it has all the unique features of both the NES and Super NES. This right here is the box that it came with. We already checked out all the stuff that are inside this box, the ins and the outs of it. Uh, before we get with the review, I guess I'd like to do this shout out to Gernon Jones. Thank you for checking my channels. I hope you do well. And let's get on to the review. What's up guys? So before we get started, here are all the games and uh, products and all the stuff that we're gonna be testing. So we're gonna test these two slots. We're gonna test the NES side first. And after that, the Super NES side. Um, we're gonna test all these games. So I'll start with Rygar, Blaster Master, Super Mario Bros. 3, Rat Racer 2. I'm gonna see if that game works in here. Um, Castlevania 3. Now we're gonna see if that one actually works. I'll show you that horrible audio that I mentioned on my other videos. Uh, Ninja Gaiden. This game seems to have problem with clones too. And Dragon Warriors. And an import from the Famicons. The same games that I've been testing on all my <laughs> clones review. So yeah, we're also gonna test to see if this um, converter that came free with the system see if it'll work with the game as well on the Super Nintendo side we're gonna test Street Fighter Alpha 2 Doom which which uh, has that Super FX 2 chip in there same thing for Yoshi's Island we're gonna test Donkey Kong Country uh, Kirby Superstars which has another kind of chip in there uh, same thing for Alpha 2 up there too we're gonna test Super Goose and Ghosts, and the reason I want to test Super Goose and Ghosts is because, like on many other clones, Super Goose and Ghosts had that glitch on level four that had that level darken. I'm gonna test that and see if that level is still like that. If it's still like that, then this game might not be playable at all. <laughs> so, but yeah, we'll see about that. And then we're gonna test an import. The Super Famicom versions of uh, Rockman and Forte here, which is basically Mega Man and Bass. And we're gonna test uh, Repro, which this time it's Secret of Mana 2. So yeah, as well as as well as testing these two controller too, the the uh, retro uh, NES controller and the retro Super NES controller. So see how they perform if this one seems if this one does not perform that well um, we can always test it with the OEN controllers too just in case and yep we're we'll also be testing on the Super Game Boy here uh, to see how the Super Game Boy games will work with this retro system as well so here we got games like Donkey Kong Operation C uh, Final Fantasy Adventure, Metroid 2, The Return of Samus, and lastly, Rampage World Tour. So yeah, we're gonna be um, let's we're gonna see how all of these will work on that retro. So yeah, let's find out and see how it see how it goes. Okay, guys, since this uh, retro does not have an aspect ratio buttons i will have to uh, manually change that setting on my tv the box that came with the retro already mentioned that that the console does not have an option for uh different race ratio aspects so yeah so we'll just have to change it on the tv and let's see how the game looks so here is how Rygar looks and plays like on the retro here HD so yeah so there's Rygar as you can see it's in the 3x4 ratio aspect here and I'm using 
this controller that came with the system. So let's see how that works. So I am playing Rygar in HD. I have to say, it ain't bad. <laughs> I don't experience any lacy issues or any lags at all with this controller. In fact, it's a very comfortable controller. <laughs> I really love this game. So you're playing as Rygar and you just have to travel from land to land and trying to uh, trying to save the world here. I haven't gotten this far on this game yet so as a kid I remember I gotten farther than this but I haven't played this game since forever now. <laughs> You can stop on enemies, but you can't kill them unless you're actually attacking them. <laughs> it's a very cool and fun game. So as you can see, it works okay. If I press the button, if I press jump, it jumps okay. If I press up, it goes up. So yeah, Rygar works okay. Next up, uh, yeah, we finished with Rygar here, so fantastic. Uh, let's try Blaster Master. Uh, yeah, this is gonna be a long testing, so if you're not gonna stick around for the entire video, I have some, um, yeah, some, I have some shortcuts and timeline down on this description so you can just skip to whichever testing that you want to see and yeah right now let's test blaster master and see if this will work with the retro so on the other clone this game do have problems especially the avs which is supposed to be perfect but <laughs> let's see if the retro can handle it And seems like we get a blue screen. Let's press reset. Yeah, it seems like the retro has problems. Let's do what we always do. Give it three strikes. So this is strike one. See if it works. Ah, still blue screen. It might be a disappointment if it doesn't work. I'll just wipe it a little bit here, shake it real good, and we'll see if it worked this time. This time we get a green screen. <laughs> That's not good. Yep, so let's say for strike number three here, let's take a little blow on it and see if it'll work nope it's not gonna work <laughs> so yeah um, blaster master doesn't work so like the retro or like, like the AVS it seems that this game does not like the retro. Let's cheat and give it one last strike. Maybe it might surprise us. Nope. Not gonna surprise us. So, yeah. Blaster Master is a no no for this system. Kinda sad too because this game works very good with the other clone. I don't get it. Maybe the HD part makes it not compatible or something. <laughs> it's kind of some reason this game always have problem with HD system, starting with the AVS and now with this thing. I just hope that it works with the other uh, HD clones. Next up, everybody's favorite, 
Super Mario Bros. 3. This one should work. I hope. Yep. So, this is Super Mario Bros. 3. As you can see, yeah, it works okay. The colors are nice and sharp and vibrant here. <laughs> There is absolutely no lag issues. Of course, the control is a little bit wonky compared to if you play it on the compared to how you play it on the um, composite side. On the HD side, you do have some of these stutter. But it does work though. It doesn't it doesn't run quite as smooth as if you're playing on the composite but it still works of course if you play this game if you play if you try to play this like throughout you might have some problem because <laughs> yeah this is the this is the game that like like up there i missed those coins when i was supposed to like fly so yeah it the control seems to be a bit wonky and I just couldn't get used to couldn't get used to all the platforming through here. I bet you if I go um if I go on most of those other platform on level like on level three and try to duck it might take might take a few practice too. Let's see, let's see if we have problems with level 3. Let's see if we can have problems with that because I want to try that crouching thing again. Let's see if we can slide. Does it slide all the way? Yep, the sliding works okay though. Like I said, it's the wonky part that <laughs> kind of bothers me here. Okay. Yeah. I don't know if it's just this controller or if it's actually the system. Alright, so we got through level 2. Let's check out level 3 and try that ducking trick, the crouching trick that we've been trying on All Stars. So. Oh my gosh. See how wonky it is? I couldn't even stomp them. Couldn't even stomp them directly. Shouldn't happen like that. Okay, so this is the mushroom. We got it. Alright, let's see if we can duck down there. Yep. We could, but we do have problems trying though. <laughs> Let's see, Mario doesn't stand very steady too. Let's try again. Yep. One more time. Yep. A third time. Well. Now we're starting to have problems. <laughs> the third time is the time if you if you press it in the middle part of your of the dashing, you might be able to make it down, but if you're coming close like that, sometimes you will not be able to make it like this part. And this D-pad is very cheap <laughs> and kind of stiff almost. So I don't really recommend you playing this with Super Mario Bros. 3 on this system. I don't know if it was the system that is making this wonky or if it was my TV because my TV do present lag and the reason is because I don't have game mode on and this TV does not have game mode on it never has game mode in this TV here so I say Super Mario Bros 3 eh, it's kinda I give it like a, a mid thumbs up maybe like this <laughs> yeah it's almost good it's just not as good as Rygar so and the reason Rygar is because it's it doesn't have all those platforming like Marlboro 3 does 
So let's try Rat Racer 2. And here is the game that all clones hate. Um, it works on the AVS thanks to the FPGA, but let's see if it works on the Retro. It does not even load. <laughs> let's give it three strikes. Okay. Remember on the uh, gamers tech, it doesn't even start up. <laughs> this one, it the LED actually turns red, but for some reason it doesn't load the game. So I'll try two more times. So after this and one more time, we can just say it's done. Okay, one last time. It comes low on it this time. Yeah, it's done. It never works. So, Rat Racer doesn't work with any clones at all. Rat Racer 2, that is, doesn't work with any clones at all. So, let's try the game with the terrible audio. Now, play this on the original NES and it works really well but play this on this and you will hear a very distorted music <laughs> so yeah let's turn it on the thing is that it works the problem is it doesn't work very well <laughs> so let's turn the music up a little and you guys can hear it can you hear the terrible music <laughs> So yeah, Dracula's Curse. So I would like to think that they did all they can to make it work. But I just don't like the audio. Kind of reminds me of how Kind of reminds me of how the audio also has trouble playing on the Gamers Tech HD as well. I saw someone's video of it and it sounds quite as terrible as this too. <laughs> yeah, it's terrible. I don't want to hear anymore. <laughs> but yeah, the thing is, it does work but the audio makes it wish that it doesn't work <laughs> because yeah when you give me audio like that it kills me to to actually play it <laughs> another game that has problem with clones sometimes ninja gaiden the first one let's see if it works blaster master fail will ninja gaiden also fail let's see Nope, Ninja Gaiden actually works. Now let's just see if it, if the control will work as well. Let's see, uh, it definitely works better than Super Mario Bros. Three, except it's yeah, it has like a few seconds lag of it when he's attacking. Yeah, so yeah, it does. It does kind of like lag a little when you try to attack. So if I try to slice this guy, if I if I wait for the exact moment to strike him, it will take like a few seconds to strike. <laughs> so yeah, let's see if we can kill these two. It does work quite okay though, not as bad as Super Mario Bros. 3. Although it's still not perfect. I just wish that there's not that many platforming in this game. The platforming is the part that the control has problems with. Of course, Ninja Gaiden was meant to have platforming like this though. <laughs> so not having these platforms will make the game not challenging.
Yeah, I have to say, it's not as bad, but it's also not as good. The controller has delays, the attack is delays, and the music is a little bit off. But it's not as wonky as Super Mario Bros. 3 control though. So I have to say, Ninja Gaiden, I give it a pass on this system. Just that it's not perfect. Let's try Dragon Warrior. Dragon Warrior also have problems on clone sometimes too. So let's see if Dragon Warrior will work on it. So... Yep, there it is. Dragon Warrior works. The only problem I have with Dragon Warrior is not the system, but <laughs> it's with the game. This is the only place that you can save and no nowhere else. <laughs> so every time you want to save the game, you have to visit this guy and uh, talk to him. Also, every time you want to go places, you gotta use this menu. Like if you want to go down the stairs, you gotta choose stairs. <laughs> so that's just one of the few major hiccups of the old Dragon Warrior games. And the graphics, it looks okay. It's a bit. You can you can use your imaginations to picture all these things. <laughs> So let's walk around, see if we can encounter any enemies. And if we don't encounter any enemies, yeah, that high level there might be, might explains why. I trained this guy to level 8 now. Anyways, yeah, it works okay. So, Dragon Warrior, I say it's good. No, not that many platforming in this game either. And that's a good thing because RPG is perfect for a system like this. Let's try the Famicom converter with this Power Ranger games, the Choji Sentai. So, let's see if it works. Yep, it does work. So, Yeah, let's try normal. And I'll pick the Red Rangers. Okay, let's see how it plays. Ah, it actually, uh, actually works very well. Yeah, I do have to say, unlike Super Mario Bros. 3, the control works very good here. And it doesn't delay that much like Ninja Gaiden. I mean all my attack came out came out quite good, quite accurate too. <laughs> See, I can uh, I can dodge this guy's projectile very easily too. Um, man, I could play this game forever then. This game has very tight control. Accurate controls. It's the kind of control that the kind of control that you want to you want to perform. I mean, look at that. I got surrounded by three enemies and I could easily kill them with just my sword here. Oh my gosh, that guy can crouch. <laughs> Let's see. I'm going to go to the mech battle and see if I can beat the first monster. Alright, so let's fight the first boss here and see if we can see if we can beat this uh, Yeah, it's a mirror boss. Okay. Now we're going to go to the mech battle Alright, so Let's see if Garuda can kill this dude.
Haha. <laughs> yeah, you just gotta know how to block him attack. Oh man, I gotta use my super on this guy. I gotta wait till my bar is filled. Uh, but this does not work like a fighting game though. There he goes. Super finisher. <laughs> yeah, it it does not work like a fighting game where you like fight, but yeah, it's kind of like you block and then he attack, and then after he attacks, you attack him before he make his next move, and then once your bar is full, you press the start button and it'll perform like the super combo or super moves on the the enemies, and yeah, you could easily beat him that way. But that does not work with every boss though because a lot of the later boss have other kinds of moves and other kinds of attacks and all that stuff. So yeah, you can't use the same tactic on the, all these bosses. So yeah, there's the password. <laughs> yeah, back then they don't have battery saves or anything. But yeah, I have to say for this converter in the Sentai game, Works very well. Alright. Alright, so we got the NES section all done. Um, it's time we go super and starting with a super NES. And we're gonna start with this Donkey Kong Country. See if it'll work with the retro there. And we're gonna try it with the clone controller. And if this controller sucks, we can always use this one. <laughs> so let's see if Donkey Kong Country works. There you go. It works just fine. Yeah, look at that beautiful HD graphics there. <laughs> so Donkey Kong Country. I don't like the feel of this controller though. Like the uh, like the NES one, the controller does feel a bit stiff as well. Let's go to uh, the minecart. The minecart has a lot of jumping in there, so let's see if the jumping works. Let's see, yeah, the jumping works okay. The only problem I have is that the D-pad is still stiff like the other ones and these buttons have all those convex buttons as you know I like my uh, Y and X con as concave well this one has all of them convex so <laughs> it makes it kind of kind of wonky or kind of awkward if I should say it for me to uh, play it like this. Let's go to this one. Let's see if the platforming is any good. Oh, platforming works okay. It's not as bad as what was experienced with Super Mario Bros. 3 on the NES side, but. Yeah, it does work quite okay though. I just wish that these buttons aren't as... I mean, these buttons, they feel kind of mushy to me. Not as, uh, not as tactile as these ones. So, yeah, if they aren't that mushy, it'll be really, uh, it'll be much more fun to use, or much more comfortable to use. I do have to say Donkey Kong Country works okay though. There is no there is no bad glitches or anything to be seen here. Yeah all the controls that all the controls, all the moves, all the all of the uh, attacks and all that stuff they all work. Except the part where I was gonna roll down there and jump, but <laughs> yeah, that was, that was actually my fault, though. So 
so Donkey Kong Country works okay this controller on the other hand the buttons not okay <laughs> let's try Street Fighter Alpha 2 the game that does not even work on the FC twin or on some of the FC twin so let's see if it works on this one let's see does it work I'm gonna play Street Fighter Alpha 2 in HD and it works See how the intro loads. Yeah, the intro actually works okay. Now we're not gonna watch the entire intro. Let's play some Alpha 2. Let's change the option a little bit here and then we can uh, Play ourselves an Alpha 2. Alright. Okay, who am I gonna pick? Well, since Sakura is new in this game, let's pick Sakura. Like most people hated the loading in this. It's not that awful though, it's just annoying, so every time they say round one fight, it's two second pass. <laughs> so yeah, let's see if we can beat Akuma here. See how uh, comfortable the controller is. And I have to say the controller is not as comfortable for fighting game as compared to the original. <laughs> it does work okay though. But the D-pad has the same problem as the D-pad that was on the FC-16 GO. It's too stiff. <laughs> I mean, I can't do moves immediately like I would on the original controller. So, I'm, I'm not gonna try the original controller next. So, yeah, that's uh, Street Fighter Alpha 2. Worked okay. So yeah, I'm not gonna use this controller anymore. These are too mushy for my hands, so it's they're not as good. Look kind of similar to that, the Gamers Tech controller as well too on the uh, Gamers Tech 16 bit HD. Except that this top part is different. So yeah, I don't like this D-pad at all and these buttons. Why are they so terrible? <laughs> they do work, they just feel terrible. Feel mushy and stiff. And no human beings can handle that. Next, we're gonna try Doom. Another Super FX game. Let's see if Doom works. I don't want it to look awful. Okay, let's see. Yep, Dune does work. And now we're using an actual Super Nintendo controller. And if you look at that, yeah, the game actually looks quite good on this system here. Using an actual Super Nintendo controller makes the experience a lot better. <laughs> you don't feel, you don't have those mushy feeling anymore. And the music is actually quite rocking good here. All the same glitch and stuff are still in this game though. So you can still get stuck on walls or corners and stuff too. Let's see, let's see if I can kill some guys here. Ah, oh, come on! That door always hangs on me. Yeah, the pixels are very ugly in this game. 
but that's early Super Nintendo for you though. <laughs> On emulator, I think on emulator this game looked a lot worse. <laughs> I guess on console you don't see all those green flashy pixels like you would on emulator, especially the SNES 9X <laughs> emulators. I think on ZW on on Z SNES it look, it looks a lot better. And since this one's a clone and doesn't use emulator. It actually looks quite good. Let's see, there's a secret here, I think. Where's this? Yeah, it's on the other side, maybe. I'll look for it later. <laughs> in this level. You guys could tell it works. So yeah. The control is the control is still awful but at least it works and it plays just fine. Next another Super FX game Yoshi's Island Let's see if this one has any glitch or problem as well. Most people experience problem with this game. Sometimes that startup doesn't even show. But on this one it does. Yeah, look at the nice crisp graphics right there. That's really that is really beautiful. <laughs> one of the most beautiful title screen ever. <laughs> So here we got the file set thing here, so you can choose whichever one you want to play. Like I said, using this controller makes all the differences. Yeah, that crying is still annoying sometimes. I just love every level in this game man, the, so much details and so, so much details, so much uh, exploration, so much secrets. It's just, it's just too good to look at. <laughs> oh my gosh, I miss it. Forgot how to do that thing. So I'm supposed to press up. Oh, there he goes. There he goes. Oh man, can't even go that far. Anyways, it does work. So for Yoshi's Island. That's a good thumbs up for me. It's not as laggy as the NES Super Mario Bros. 3. Let's see how this one will work. Kirby Superstar. Um, if this one works, that also means Super Mario RPG also works too. Since they use the same chip. Yep, and I do have to say, it works good. So if we go to Dynablay here, yeah it works and it looks very good. Control works okay. Kirby is the only game that I figure doesn't have bad control at all. Everything works, works the way it should. 
I can perform moves just fine, attack just fine, it doesn't lag like Ninja Gaiden. I still blame that control though, maybe just that control that makes those games horrible. <laughs> or it might just be my TV. As you can tell, everything about this game works just fine. Ah man, hit the wrong blocks. So yeah, Kirby Superstar works okay. Hey guys, so now we're trying Super Goose and Ghosts, the Super NES version, and we are on level four now. Level four. And let's see if um, if the level on that one is still darkened. Now I use a stage select code for this, so let's see how how that level turns out. <laughs> As you can, t if that level is still darkened, that means the dragon level three is still missing as well. So <laughs> let's go in. So here we can skip this part. As you can tell, I'm down there. And this is level 4. See how level 4 turns out. Come on, focus. I just hate this camera. It doesn't focus it when we want it to. Even if it doesn't focus, you can tell the level looks crappy. <laughs> It doesn't focus because there's no color on screen. So as you can tell, it's very dark and... Now it focuses, I think. So we can go back to it. There it is. Let's look how awful it is. You can't see anything but the en enemy sprites. Oh my god. So I can't play the game like this. So I had to say Super Goose and Ghosts for the retro is a no no. You can't even go through level four without seeing anything, so next up the repro Sikandin Sasu 3, which is Secret of Mana 2. So, let's see how it works. And, yeah, it does work. This is the translation version. So it has everything translated. Let's go do some battle. Okay. As you can tell, it works quite fine. Yeah. My character levels up. It's kind of sad that Square Enix does not want to release this game here ever. <laughs> it's a really interesting game. Music sounds okay. Audio's okay. Sound effects works it's fine. Yeah, and all the moves came out quite good. So yeah, um, I had to say, this repro looks great. So, if you have a repro, like uh, 
thinking this is Sue 3 here or Secret Mana 2 here. It, it will definitely work. As for a Super Famicom cartridges, it may also work too. It doesn't have any region lock unlike the FC Twin. So now you can play Super Famicom game just fine. As evidenced by this, that is. <laughs> So we are playing, let's play bass. Unlock that thing yet. Let's go to a level. Graphics is very smooth. Attack works okay. Yeah, base can shoot in all eight ways, I think. Eight directions. <laughs> That's a major, major improvement from Mega Man. And Zero, I think. <laughs> he can't charge his weapon, but he surely can rapid shoot them. Man, that guy look a lot like Vector Man. <laughs> He's so green just like Vector Man. <laughs> Alright. Yep, so... Super Famicom games. Like... Rockman and Forte here, or, or Mega Man and Bass, works okay too. Now it's time for Super Game Boy. See if how Super Game Boy looks on this clone. There we go. There you go, now it gives us Donkey Kong. Yeah, I gotta turn it down a little bit. It's actually quite loud. But it does work. Let's see how, uh, see how the level goes. Yeah, that looks really nice. That's uh, that's the improvement of the Super Game Boy right there. You can actually hear Pauline say help help. Unlike in the uh, unlike if you play this on the Game Boy. If you play this on the Game Boy, you don't hear that. So. <laughs> and Mario actually has some new moves in this game. Of course, those mo those new moves aren't quite as are quite as efficient. <laughs> Let's try again.
it could be just the console that making that delay lag. There it goes. Now we can do it. <laughs> I really like that new voiceover they add in there. Makes it look a lot like an actual Super Nintendo game now. I'm glad that they add this new level in there too. Oh, there's a arcade level. If it was just these four levels, I'll be really mad, but they actually go way beyond these <laughs> 75 meters. No. Yeah, we all know. So Donkey Kong works okay. But what about Operation C, another Game Boy game? This one is an original Game Boy title. So it will look quite different on the Super Game Boy. Like before, we have problems. There it goes, now it works. Let's just hope the game loads. And it loads just like on the regular Game Boy. So there's Operation C. It doesn't have any Super Game Boy features, so let's just play it as it is. Yeah, it looks like a very fun game plays a lot smoother than what it was on the Game Boy. <laughs> yeah, I got better gun now. Good thing I saved this be after I died. <laughs> the only thing is that this game probably don't have multiplayer. Yeah, I'd rather keep this gun though. This gun can kill a lot of en enemies. It's much more useful than that other one. <laughs> oh my gosh, and I just forgot about this thing. Ah. Oh, Anyways. Yeah, so Operation C, it works great. Now, let's see how Metroid works. Metroid 2 here. So, if you don't know, Metroid 2 has a re remix for the 3DS called Samus Return and this is the original of that so I have both in here you can find this one quite easily like maybe for like 10 or 15 bucks online and this one just came out so you can get this right now probably cost you like 40 or something I got mine like $10 off because I got like a good deal on it but yeah, and I have played a little bit of it, so it's not too bad. And compare this to the one that um, AMR2 did, um, I actually prefer this one better. The AMR2 is actually good though, but like I said, the AMR2 use a lot of resource that already exists. It's kind of more like a hack than it is an original game but it does work as well and now let's try 
Final Fantasy adventure. Another um, in Japan is called Seiken Densetsu, so it's another game in the Mana series. But it plays very well with the Super Game Boy. So even though it's not Super Game Boy Hands game, it's actually a very good game. So let's see if it works or see how how good it plays. Sometimes you just had to tinker around with this system. So let's try that. Nope, it still doesn't work. Could be the adapter, some the adapter as well. The thing about the Super Game Boy is that even if the bottom connector works, the one in here does not. And it could be vice versa as well. So you have to blow off three sides. <laughs> and that will have a likely chance of making it work. Because yeah, sometimes there could be dust on all three of them. And then you also have to make sure that when they connect, they connect properly too. All three, all, all two of those connectors. So the Super Game Boy connector has to be connected properly to the system. And the Game Boy game has to connect properly to the Super Game Boy. So if one of those connectors screw up, then you're not going to get anything to work. That's more like a difficult, difficult situation there. Or it could be my cartridge. <laughs> Maybe that cartridge is so old it doesn't work. There it goes. Now it works. So it is the cartridge. So there it is. So yeah, I actually have a lot of these weapons now. Push it, this is not my safe file, but this is this is where he, we last left off. <laughs> so it plays a lot like Sword of Mana, which is a remake to this game. It's one of those games where you play a while, it's hard to come back to because there's a lot of stuff that you have to relearn again. So yeah, graphics are actually pretty good uh, for Super Game Boy standard. The sound is a little bit off, but not too bad. So Final Fantasy Adventure works great. Now the last game we're gonna try is Rampage. And Rampage is very interesting in the fact that it's a Game Boy Color game, but also works with the Super Game Boy. So that's really great. Let's see if it works on the system. Yeah, it works just fine. Actually, it doesn't, unlike the other game, it doesn't have any problems at all. <laughs> when starting up, that is. So, it is not in full color like the Game Boy Color version. But it does work okay. Okay, let's play as George. The King Kong of this game. Of course, playing this on the Super Game Boy means that you get all those uh, 
palette color instead of the actual color. Because if you know the Super Game, but even though it has color, it doesn't have all the true color of the Game Boy Color system does. All the Super Game Boy will recognize of this is the palettes. <laughs> of course, the animation looks very nice though. Has an, I think uh, of all the Rampage games, yeah, all the Rampage game has some of the best animation ever on the Game Boy. Let's look at that sprite, man. I lo really, really love the animation there. Better than what was seen on the NES version. Ah. <laughs> So yeah, uh, that is Rampage for the Super Game Boy. It actually runs really good. The animation looks really nice and the control is not as bad. However, I do have some things to say about this controller right here. Now this controller works okay. However, the D-pad is quite stiff. These select and start buttons, um, they're, not that, they're not that bad, but they are tiny. And sometimes trying to press them, you will have to at least, you will have to make sure that you press the right one because they look very, they feel very much identical. Um, the Y and X buttons are convicts now. And that doesn't really go well with me because uh, when I try to press Y and X, I expect it to feel that concave feel. And this doesn't have that, so that makes these two buttons as much as mushy as the B and A button. Now the B and A does feel a little bit okay since they are always convex, but like I said, they're when you try to press them together like this, like playing a fighting game yeah, they're kind of like mushy with this thumb here so sometimes your hands can easily slip <laughs> um, on the L and R buttons these are the only two things that feels like the original <laughs> so yeah, other than yeah other than the L and R buttons everything else just doesn't feel right so that's just why that's just the uh, just that's just how I feel about the controller. Yours may vary. You might like these convex button more than I do. So, but to me, I don't like the way these two feel and how mushy they are, and how stiff this D-pad is. I mean, it doesn't have the arrow like the Nintendo D-pad, so that means that it doesn't blister your thumb that much. But the problem is that stiff feel of it that makes it kind of like not good on the hands another thing is this controller now unlike the Super Nintendo repro ones uh, the clone ones this one is actually quite comfortable um, the design of it is comfortable B and A are comfortable to press they are concave like the original Nintendo ones <laughs> and uh so and start buttons and d-pad now like i said these are exactly like how they feel on that other one this d-pad still stiff as hell and so and start button feels the same they are not as problematic though since there are less buttons this time but yeah they do i mean they they are kind of tiny there's no lnr so you don't have turbo if anything that's still okay and yeah, if I had to say anything good about this one, the design, the B and A, yeah, those are the only two things. Everything else though needs um, needs a revision, I think. I think the wire is okay too. The wire is quite long. Uh, these clones always have long wires, so if you like um, a very a very uh, long wire controller these will actually do I don't know how long the quality of these will last but I doubt that they'll last longer than one or two years because with these kinds of stiffness 
I don't think I want to keep it. <laughs> As for the console itself, Yes, as for this console itself, I have to say the design is really good, but these buttons are really cheap. I mean, they look nice when they look nice on pictures and images and stuff, but when you try to uh, at least press it, it doesn't feel as good because it feel it has that cheapness on it. So this button here, the uh, power switch here feels like it could be ripped off at any moment so that does not feel good to me and the reset button as well it's almost like you're pressing a ball and that ball is trying to jump out of you so that doesn't go well with me it doesn't have a name the connectors the connectors are okay the, the, the cartridge slot they're no problem they doesn't I mean, putting a game in and taking it out is no problem. It it doesn't um, yeah, it doesn't kind of like have that grooves or that yeah. It, it's not as difficult to pull off as on the other claw. Not as bad as what was seen on the retro, the uh, retron. I yeah, I keep calling it retro. Uh, the controller slots are okay. Same thing for the NES side. You can only play NES game with NES and Super NES game with Super NES. So, yeah, you can't use these for the NES games at all. So, it's not like the FC Twins. You do have region free though, so no longer do you have any restriction on Super Famicom games. They give you a free converter for, for Famicom games on the NES side, so if you want to play that, you have the option to. Overall, for this console, if I should give it a grade, I mean, it does not handle Castlevania 3 very well. The audio is terrible. A lot of game has off-key audios a little bit there. Uh, controls a little bit wonky. Uh, the, I think the compatibility is quite good on the Super Nintendo side except for that Super Goose and Ghost that doesn't show that proper level 4 and um, Blaster Master has problems and Rat Racer 2 has problems so yeah I think if I should give a gray at least a B would, be do, would, would do it because the controls they are good, just not as comfortable. And compatibility, even though the Super Nintendo side has good compatibility, the NES side has problems. So it deserves a B at most. And at least it's the first HD clones that I bought. So yeah, it has AV, it has HDMI, and that's pretty much it. It doesn't have anything else doesn't even have any region switch or anything either so pretty much you can only play NTSC with this thing so yeah yeah that's all that's pretty much what I think of this console so hope you guys have a nice day hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you next time on my next review so